Hey Floss Tube, it is Michelle McGraw from Made by Michelle McGraw, and this is my Floss Tube number 10. So it is December 2nd on the date that I'm filming this. I am not going to upload that until this video, until Thursday or Friday of this week. And I am gonna let you know later why that is, um, but I'll get into that. Um, so I have some fully finished. I have some finishes. I have some previously fully finished FFOs. FFOs. Um, I have a giveaway. I have stitchy kindness. I have tons of stuff. So I'm going to get right into sharing with you. Um, so for the first part, I am going to go over the get to know your stitcher. So these are some questions um, that some people, some floss tubers have been doing. Um, and Stitching in the Bluegrass did it last week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Okay, so just so you know, if you see my dogs walking by, I have them inside, none of my boys are here, and there's, there's one. <laughs> That's my oldest one. Um, we have three Cavaliers, and they... One of them is a little OCD, and so there's it's breezy outside and the leaves are falling. And if I let them out in the sunroom, there are skylights in the sunroom. And when the leaves get on the skylights, one of the dogs flips out and barks at them. Well, he barks at them and then he gets the other one to bark at them. And my sunroom is like, like you could see it out this window and you can hear it because the door is like right over there. And so they'll be barking at leaves and they don't stop because the leaves aren't supposed to be on the skylight for some reason and and they are and the dog flips out and it drives me nuts and it will drive you nuts as well so I'm not going to do that to you <laughs> they are inside so you will see them walking hopefully they will be quiet while I film um, generally they go and lay down we'll see what they do um, so Stitching in the Bluegrass did the Get to Know Your um, Stitchers, and I was inspired by her. And if you don't already check her out, I think I've shouted her out before. She is super sweet, so go check her out. Um, great YouTube channel. Um, okay, so first question is, where do you live? I live in North Carolina. I live near the Charlotte area. I'm in the suburbs of Charlotte. Um, I was born in Tiffin, Ohio. And when I was seven, we moved to Lebanon, Missouri. And we lived there for two and a half, three years. And then we moved to North Carolina. I have been in North Carolina since I was the summer after my fifth grade. So I have actually been in the South longer than anywhere else. Although my husband who was born and bred here um, will tell you that I'm a Yankee. So there you go. <laughs> He will still say he's his, he married a Yankee. Okay. Um, what do you do for a living? So me and my husband own two companies. So we own a concrete recycling company and we also own a grading company. So for anybody that doesn't know what a grading contractor is, we are the first ones on the job. So we go in and clear the lots. We prep the building pads. We do all of anything in the ground. That's what we do. Um, and when I first started dating my husband, I didn't know what a grading contractor was. I knew a bunch of my friends that were landscapers on the side. Some of them were firemen and they landscaped on the side. So I thought he was a landscaper. Like, I was like, oh, so you're a landscaper. And he's like, yeah, no. Um, so little did I know, we started our own business shortly after we were married. Um, he broke off from his family business and we started our grading company. Um, and then several years later, we started our concrete recycling. So what is a concrete recycler? So if you are tearing up your driveway in your house and you're going to replace that concrete, um, you would dig that concrete out. You would bring it to us. We have huge crusher that takes that Concrete crushes it into stone products that you can use the same way as you could use the stone in our area. Um, they're all over the United States. It's very popular because you're recycling 
and the concrete product is a really superior product. Um, sets back up nice, so you can use it for building pads, driveways, footings, French drains, all of that stuff. So we don't do much um, on-site grading anymore just because the concrete recycling takes so much of our time. We run our trucks in the grading company. So most of the grading jobs that we do now are we're gonna go in and put a building pad on with our recycling stone and we go in we move in, we put the big building pad out and we move out in a couple of days. So we don't stay long. Um, we used to do a lot of contract grading work. We did commercial because our stuff is big. Um, we haven't bid a job since our son, our oldest, who is 19. He was probably six or seven at the time, the last time we bid a job. So the concrete recycling definitely keeps us busy. Um, but we still do that occasional grading job and, um, but it's fast stuff. It's not full site work anymore. Um, so it just kind of morphs. So I run the office, the scale house. Um, I do all the book work and, um, yeah, my husband runs the outside. Our 19 year old son works for us as well. Um, right now he's driving a roll off truck because we have concrete, um, washout containers and concrete dumpsters and he drives he's driving that um which is a big tractor trailer um my 15 year old and my third well my fi he'll be 15 next month this month oh my gosh like 18 days he'll be 15 uh my 15 year old and my 13 year old um come to the office every day they are homeschooled our oldest was already in high school. They used to be in a Montessori school and the Montessori school closed. Um, so my older son who was in ninth grade at the time wanted to stay in a private school setting. So we actually found a um, Catholic high school for him, um, private Catholic high school and he went there. Great school. Um, my younger two, we didn't really find a good fit for them and so we homeschooled them. My husband was homeschooled years ago. So probably before it was very popular, he was homeschooled. So we're very uh, familiar with it and know all that. So um, those two are homeschooled and my older one already graduated. So there's that, which that leads into children. We have three boys. Kyle is our oldest at 19. Jesse is our youngest at 13 and Owen is in the middle. He is 14. He will be 15 in 18 days. Um, pets. We have three Cavalier, King Charles, Ca King Charles Cavalier Spaniels. Um, so they're not just King Charles, they have the Cavalier, which have a longer nose. King Charles are more popular over in Europe. Um, in the U.S., most of them are Cavaliers. They have longer noses. Um, King Charles can be like, um, kind of pushed in nose like a not a pug, not quite that way. Um, there's another dog that I can't remember. But anyhow, the Cavaliers um, are really just a small version of an English Springer Spaniel. And I've had an English Springer Spaniel my whole life. We had an English Springer Spaniel when I was a kid. I had one as an adult. Um, I've had two as an adult. Um, and then we have the Cavaliers now. Um, they're just smaller. So ours range from 13 pounds up to 26 pounds, um, which is all in the norm. Um, they're just different lines and some of them are bigger and different colors. There's four different colors. We have three of the four colors. And no, I'm not getting a fourth one, just so you know. Three, it's madhouse. When they get to bark, they stir each other up. We're done. We're good. Hold on, let me clear this. Sorry. Um, I have it on airplane mode, so I'm not sure how alerts are coming through still. Okay, um, let's see. Other hobbies. Oh, and we also have a cat, which is not really a cat, but she'll, you'll see her walk by. Sammy the cat. Um, the dogs love her. Love her. She does not necessarily love them quite as much. She is okay. Um, like she tolerates them. She gets annoyed with the youngest of our puppies, of our dogs, because he's more puppyish and he likes to lick her and she can take it for so long. It's a cavalier thing. They lick, 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 lick. And she takes it so long and then she's like, okay, I'm done. And he just keeps on. 
So he basically molests the cat until she's had enough. There you go. So other hobbies besides cross-stitching, um, I scrapbook, I make cards, um, I've done loom knitting. I can't regular, I, I can regular knit. I regular knit years ago. I enjoy more loom knitting because I can put it down like wherever I'm at. Um, so I, but I mostly cross stitch. Um, that takes up the majority of my time. Okay, favorite movie, number six. So my favorite movie, I don't know that I have an ultimate favorite movie, but I have um, what I call like geeky movie favorites. So a movie that would come on that I will stop and watch every time it comes on. Rockstar. I love the music. I grew up on that music, so I love the music. Um, Rock of Ages, another one, the music I like. Um, Harry Potter, I will always watch a Harry Potter movie. Um, what else? Star Wars, any Star Wars movie, have to stop and watch it. I am loving The Mandalorian. So if you don't have Disney Plus, it is worth it just for The Mandalorian. And I'm going to leave it, so no spoilers. Uh, favorite TV show? Um, oh my gosh, that's hard because that goes through phases. I'm not a huge comedy lover. Um, not that I don't like it. It's just not something I gravitate towards. Like Friends. I have seen Friends many, many times. Watch it on Netflix. Um, when I stitch, a lot of times I like to watch a show that I've seen before because I don't have to totally focus on it. So um, current day... I watch The Walking Dead, um, love me some Dirty Daryl, he needs a shower, but I love Dirty Daryl, um, Game of Thrones, I was a huge fan of the books, loved the show, I was not crazy about the last season as much as the rest of the seasons, I think every Game of Thrones fan will say that, um, but still good, and I was glad to have an ending to the show, I would love for the book to come out. So we can see what happens. Come on, George, write some more. So hopefully we'll get that soon. Um, let's see, what else do I watch? I like, um, oh gosh, Forensic Files is something that I watch. I watch that like going to sleep at night. My husband finds that very disturbing. <laughs> I said to him, it's relaxing. And he's like, how is that relaxing? And I'm like, well, I've seen a lot of them, so I already know. And it's just, it's interesting. <laughs> And I can kind of go to sleep to it. I don't know. Um, what else? I I used to love um, Lost. I will step away from talking about Lost. We'll just let that go. I was not happy with the ending. Great up until like season three or four. And then like season three was good. But after that, I'm just going to let it go. I'm not going to harp on this. Um... Number eight, favorite book. So my ultimate favorite book would have to be Gone with the Wind. I have read Gone with the Wind so many times that I had to get a new copy of Gone with the Wind. So I lost pages out of my book because it was so worn. Um, I also have the digital version. I have it on my um, phone and on my iPad to read. I love the story because it's against, it's somebody that pulls themselves up by their bootstraps and makes it happen, even though she's chastised for it. And she thinks what she wants is because that's what society has told her she wanted. And all along, she was throwing away what she really needed with both hands. I do love the sequel book, um, Scarlet, which was written by somebody else. I do not let like Rhett Butler's people don't like that version at all. That was not a good follow-up. I don't like that one. Um, but I love Gone with the Wind. Read it many, many times. Um, I enjoy rereading books. It's like visiting an old friend. So I don't know. I'm weird like that. I love the Game of Thrones series. I have read it and I'm actually restarting it in the hopes that the next book will come out and I can pick it right up after I'm done. Um, Harry Potter. 
I would actually like to reread Harry Potter. It's been many, many, many years that since I've read Harry Potter books, but Harry Potter books for me were special because that was the first series that my son and I read together. Um, so my oldest is dyslexic. And so we worked a lot on reading and, and to work on those things, you have to read out loud so I can hear the mistakes that you're doing and try to help you and see where you're needing help. And we did Harry Potter, which FYI for a read aloud was not the easiest book to read, but we both enjoyed it. And that kind of sparked him in his love of reading. And so that always holds a special place in my heart. Um, favorite number nine favorite music would be country rock hair bands 80s 90s yep. and number 10 one word that describes you uh, unique I don't know I don't know I'm weird so there you go all right so let's get to know your stitcher now we will get into it. All right. Um, all right. So I, my husband, I had mentioned to my husband that I would like a sewing machine. And, but I wanted a sewing machine with classes because I don't know how to sew. Like zero. Zero ability to sew. I don't sew. I have never sewn. And so I wanted something with classes. So, um, I told him that would be a great Christmas present. My husband can't wait for Christmas. So he actually went to the store. It's a big quilting store in our area and he bought a machine. And one day I was leaving work to go to the bank and he said, here, stop by and pick up your sewing machine. And he gave me the receipt and he told me there was classes. So I've been to two of the classes. Um, it's mainly, they were free classes when you get your machine. They are get to know your machine classes which were informative to me, but some of it was above my level because I don't understand all that. So tomorrow I actually have a paid for class that I'm doing, which is basic sewing. Um, I'm very excited for that because I think that that's going to um, be more beneficial for me. I have figured out some things, which I have some fully finished objects to show you. So. This is why I cannot upload these videos until Thursday. So Wednesday, I am headed up to um, the Raleigh area to see my girlfriends up there and we are doing our girls Christmas. So we are going to go to the melting pot. We exchange handmade gifts that we do every year and we have a nice dinner and we have fun and laugh and joke. And these are for the girls. So I have them 31 bags that were on sale decades ago. And I had um, embroidery done on it that says jugs, just us girls. Okay. It's our thing for our, when you put it in your calendar, it's a jugs event. Okay. So just us girls. And I had that embroidered on all of the bags for them, but inside the bag, they will have a ornament, a Disney ornament. So this is the first one that I did. And of course, this is Cinderella. And I finished the back using um, Vana's tutorial. And I just have some fabric back here of Disney princesses, just different ones. So there's Cinderella there. And then I put a little tag on it that says jugs and it has a 2019 which I actually found these from Helen D. Um, she's on floss tube and she had gotten some of these little um, charms and I ordered them off of Amazon. I've got 2019 and 2020, so I'm prepared for next year. And I just did that on a scrap and there is Cinderella. So this was the first one I sewed. So I like, I, Finish them all differently. The next one I did is Jasmine. And one of my girlfriends is a huge Jasmine fan. So, and we took a girl's Disney trip. That's why I did them Disney ornaments. So Jasmine, and then here's the back of her fabric and the tag. And it's um, Aladdin fabric. So that's how that turned out. 
Um, these patterns are on Etsy and I will link it down below. So anytime that you go to my video, I put in the description box what everything is. Um, if you don't see it, come back because sometimes I upload overnight. It takes a really long time sometimes to upload these videos. The next day I go in and edit it and add all the details. So if you don't see any details, check back. I will have them. The next one is Belle. She's so cute. And there's her fabric. It's a little different than the other one. It's a little different. All different um, princesses. And all the ribbons are just ribbons that I had in my stash for my scrapbooking. So probably stamping up ribbon, just FYI. And my final one, let me fix the ribbon on here, fluff it out a little bit because it looks better when it's fluffed, is Snow White. And I loved how she turned out. And then she uses the same fabric as one of the other ones with her tag. So these, um, they're super easy to sew. Um, I used Vana's tutorial. I modified it a little bit to help me measure and all that kind of stuff, um, but it worked out and you hand stitch it as a primitive stitch. Um, but I'm excited to give the girls these. So they will not only get the 31 bag, but they will get their Disney ornament. And each one's getting a different one. So speaking of ornaments, I have my boys' ornaments all done. I need to fully finish them. That is a project most likely for this weekend, is what I'm thinking. I was gonna work on it this past weekend and I put up the Christmas tree, which is here in my family room. And um, by the time Saturday came around, I had been cooking and all of that stuff. And I just didn't feel like doing anything else. So I've shown some of these before, but here is my oldest son's. And that's because he drives an orange Jeep. So this will be finished. This one I've shown before is a prairie schooler. It's part of the tree farm pattern. I kind of messed up. I don't have much margin up here. So I'm gonna have to be very careful when I sew this one. But I did them all on Picture This Plus murky fabric. That was my favorite fabric this season, so I used it. And this is my last one and it says Jingle Bells and it's a little dog with some antlers on and he is so cute. And he is from a Dimensions kit. I did not use what was in the kit because I wasn't 100% sure it was DMC. So I put it into DMC and there is a couple color changes mainly just because like this is a darker, this is a different blue in here than what they called for. I didn't have what they called for. So I just used something that I had. So it's for an ornament. I'm not doing the rest in the series. I did use a color that was in the other patterns, but I wasn't gonna do them right now. So I just picked a color and went with it. So those will all need to be finished. Okay, so now we can get into my cross stitch boards. It is time to change up my cross stitch boards, which if you don't know what my cross stitch boards is, check out my Instagram, scroll down. I always take pictures of them when they are um, got new stuff on them and I'll be taking pictures this week. Hopefully when the, the it's sunnier out. So my boards are in bad areas because they don't get ton, well, they're in good areas for my cross stitch. They are in bad areas to take pictures of because they don't get direct sunlight. So it's kind of like dark in that corner. And I have three boards and then a staggered frame one. And I don't have much for the bigger frame. I'm That's a newer version and I'm still working on doing stuff for that. So one of the boards, these are patterns that came in a big set and I took them apart and made them into little frames. And I will link the pattern down below. It is a current pattern that you could still get. And then this one is Kings and it's there. It's like an alphabet pattern where each letter of the alphabet has something with it. 
And this is Journey with Mary and Joseph. And I loved that one. This is Emmanuel with the baby. Baby Jesus. And this is Rejoice. So I love those. I had to pick in the in the um, pattern ones that all went in this direction so they would all match. There are ones that go um, more uh, vertically and those might be a set that I do at a later date. I still save the pattern because I love it. Okay, so I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna put up so I'm gonna just show you all my Christmas ones. Uh, let me get a piece of paper to put behind these. So this is a Prairie Schooler one. And this is a set of four. All Prairie Schoolers. These were done several years ago. Um, I simply cut these out and I put stop fray around the edges so they won't fray anymore. And they hold. They've, I've done this for years and years and years. Just a little stop fray. Um, I use the creamier one. There is more of a liquid one, and then there's a creamier one. What I do is I take a piece of wax paper. I squeeze on a dollop of stop fray. I take a Q-tip and I just go around the edges and dot it, like all the way around the edges, and then I put them on the wax paper to totally dry. Once that stop fray dries, it is a little sticky, like they might stick to each other, but you could take them apart and it doesn't come off the fabric and it won't fray no more. And this is the last one. And I've done this for years and years and years. Never had an issue. They're all done like that and it works great. And I can take them in and out of the frames that I have. So like these can come out of the frame. It's just a frame and you could take it out and I could switch these frames out. Okay, this was a bad one to show because it has, okay. So see, um, it I just have them in there and you can switch them out and put up my seasonal ones. It's a great way if you don't have a lot of room in your house to showcase some cross stitch or just to have a nice seasonal piece. I have three boards in my house because I'm a little obsessed with them. They don't take up much room in the wall because they're long skinny boards and do, 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 straight down. Do you like my sound effects? Okay, these are really, really old out of a book and I have no idea what book this is. So it's a little gingerbread man, a little ornament, a stocking with a bear. So you can see how old these are because I don't do bear stuff. I mean, it's cute, but it's not something I would stitch now. So I definitely stitched these years ago. Most of my round ones like this are ones that I've stitched years ago because they were they're, they go in like the cheap little um, frames like these. So, um, and you just take them apart and put them in there. So those are older. Um, anytime I see a round one, they're always something older that I've cross stitched. A little snowman face and Santa. So that's one set that I can interchange. Um, there's more in this set than actually I put on the wall, but I kind of change them up every once in a while. Next ones are ones I did. These, these were out of a book as well. I don't even have the book anymore. Um, so a little reindeer with trees. And he's cute. I liked him. And a little Christmas tree. And a gingerbread house. And these are on sparkly fabric. You can't see that on camera. It doesn't show up, but it is. And a little star. So that's another set. Okay, this is, I'm not sure that I have a full set here. 
Um, I do. Okay. So these are random. I will look up what the pattern is because I feel like I still have this pattern. There's a present. Santa, which I love. I love his beard. Any scrolly type of beard, I think is so pretty. So I love that. A poinsettia. And another Santa. So that's a set as well. Like I have more Christmas than I can display, but I do change them out. So like I might put up something for one week and then change it out with some more since I have so many that I can. Um, this is a little ornament that I got down at my Stitch and Frame um, in Rock Hill, South Carolina. It's my local LNS. And this was probably on a sample sale several years ago. And I hang it up. But I did not cross stitch this one. But it's so cute. Okay, let's see. Now these are Mill Hill kits. So this was a an experiment for me. I have since found out I'm not a fan of perforated paper for me. I don't like stitching on it. Um, I don't know, it, it's just not my favorite. So I did the Nutcracker set. And like you can see, see how clear that is? That's why I have the paper behind it. When I put them in the frame, I have some white paper I stick behind it so you can't see anything. I also found out that you can't carry your threads over in, a, in if you're using perforated paper. You have to keep within the image because any, fret, any threads, like you would be able to see it. So these were an experiment to see if I liked perforated paper. I now do them on fabric instead. I just take the perforated paper and put it over the side and I get fabric. But there's the Mouse King. But Nutcracker. And I liked him too. These are done without beading. So the kits had beading. I did not bead them. So this is another example that you can use Mill Hill kits without beads. So just FYI, you can stitch them. You can still get the same pattern. You just use the DMC floss that you would put underneath the beading and just stitch it normal. Okay, I have one more set that I have. And once again, I did these years ago, but I still have the pattern. So I will, um, I will link it down below. I will look it up and figure out what they are. I'm not sure if I can name all of them, but I will give you at least the designer. So these are little silhouettes that I did on red with white stitching. And this was fancy for me at the time because as you can see, a lot of the older ones are done on white fabric, maybe sparkly fabric, that was fun. Um, oatmeal, that was like risque when you got to stitch on oatmeal. Like that was, you know, cause this was years ago. So red, super, super fun for me to stitch on. Now I have every color under the moon, but at the time I did not. Little boy with a wagon. This one was my favorite because it was a little boy playing with a truck and I have three little boys. So that one was my favorite. The little boy with a wagon. A little boy with a teddy bear. Now, oh, wait a minute, that might be a little girl. Maybe a little girl. And then a little girl with a cat. So I liked all those. They're kind of simple patterns, but they're really cute. They look really nice up on the board. Okay, so what else do I have? I have, this is gonna be a long video because I am halfway through my piles on the table, but I have more. Okay, so this is a little ornament that I made for my son because he plays the mandolin. That's my middle son. And it's just a little ornament for him. I actually need to stick it on the Christmas tree. That was a couple years ago. Okay. 
let's do some haul. So I did order some things. They all came in. Um, souvenirs of the heart from, I think this is with thy needle and thread. Merry old soul. This is holiday hoopla Christmas. Although I might change him and do him like change his hat to blue so I could use him for winter because I think I would get more use out of him in the winter time and I don't have a lot for winter so he might go to winter. This is Santa's tree farm. This is also uh, with thy needle and thread. This one I thought I had, I did not have, and I so um, want to do this, is Ogla's Autumn Stocking Plum Street Samplers. So this is just gorgeous, and I've seen many people stitch it, and it's so pretty. It is a big pattern, but it's so, so pretty. So I wanna do this one. I wanna kit this one up and, and um, you know, at least put it as a whip. I'll get some time in on it. I also bought some patterns off of the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery on Black Friday. I got Don't Get Don't Get Your Tinsel. And it says Don't Get Your Tinsel in a Tangle. And it's a cute little sloth. And this is the same size as all of their block ones that they do. Um, so I could I had to get that one. I also had to get Holly Jolly which with the um, little raccoon, I, I'm sorry, let me, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Take it out of the plastic, holly jolly. And it has a little raccoon in there or a trash panda. Although I think that's cute. They said trash panda wasn't nice. I think it's cute. All right, I did order a couple of Etsy patterns and I am trying to see I have another one in my whips because I already started. This one was harder for, I downloaded it and printed it today because it was a little harder to, for me to print on my phone, but it's Game of Thrones. And I don't know if you can see this. It's all the characters. So that's for some nerdy stitching. I don't know when I'm gonna do this. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I might do it as individual and make them into little ornaments and have like a little, little nerdy tree with all kinds of um, different characters on it. I don't know, I have to think about it. I also got, um, this is the Little Mermaid from Brooks, Brooks Brooks. Brooks Brooks, yeah, I think that's how you say it. Um, and I love this one. I would love to get the whole set. The only problem is she only has three out. Um, King Neptune, and then the grandmother, and then um, Ariel, and the rest of the characters are out, and it's been a while, so I'm reluctant to buy the whole set, even though it would be cheaper. Um, they're just not being released fast enough, so I just bought this one for now. I love the little picture over here. That's super cute. Okay, so some of them, some of my haul I have kitted up or I have started to kit it up. So I am bound and determined to start a memorabilia this next year. I don't know which memorabilia it's gonna be. I have a couple of them. I'm kidding a couple of them. I'm not sure which one I wanna do. I have it narrowed down to a couple. One of them is Cathedral Woods Goddess. And I love the colors and it, it is beautiful. I have started to get, I have the beads in here because I got them at my local LNS and I have the um, silk, but I haven't done the DMC yet. So it's kind of in there and I haven't picked out fabric yet. Once again, that's on the list of one of them, but I don't know if that's gonna be the one I do. I don't know. Um, okay, so this pattern, um, let me see if I can find the designer. 
This is one of the Russian designers and I swear some of these are very bad at putting their name on the pattern and I would love to give credit and I just don't see it. Okay, I will put it down there on the Etsy store. Um, I don't even know what this is called, but we're gonna call it the cupboard. And it is Harry Potter in his cupboard and then kind of the letter for the Hogwarts school. I adore this pattern. I am already kidding this pattern up because I'm so obsessed with this pattern. Um, it was not in stock at the time, it was sold out. So I'm sure it has something to do with listings and how many listings you can have. And I asked her and she relisted it for me and I bought it instantly. So um, if you see it sold out, contact the owner because they apparently come and go randomly. I don't know why I don't list on Etsy, so I don't know exactly how that goes, but um, she was able to list it and I bought it right away. Okay. This is Daily Profit from Spells and Stitches. And I have started to kit this up. Let me take this out of the... Um, that's a pattern, so you can't see it. No, wait a minute, that's a picture. This is just a picture, I think. Let me look, no, that's a pattern. Sorry, you're gonna have to take the small picture. And it's, it's the newspaper with Dumbledore. Um, the pattern is super easy and why, so it looks like writing and stuff. This is not writing down here. It's like little dots to look like writing. So it actually doesn't look as hard as I think it might be. Um, and it's not super, super big. It's 104 by 159 stitches. So that's not too bad. Um, so I've been kitting that up. I really like that one. Okay, so another memorabilia that I have been kitting up is Snow Queen. And I blame Kansas City Girl and a Colorado World for this. Hers is beautiful and totally loved it. So I am kidding this one up. I don't have the beads for this one though, but I saw this fabric on another group and I had to buy it for this one. So it's a big piece but it is Snowy Trees from Fiber Flare. It is amazing. So that is like the perfect fabric for her. Um, I also have one that is just, just this, the snow. I think I want the trees in it. I'm gonna have to see how, when I lay her out, I, I think I got the right size, so I think I'm okay. Um, but that's a concern if she'll, fit in there. If not, I'm going to use the um, snow fabric. That'll be fine. Um, and then this one is not a memorabilia, but it is um, Electra, And I like her. So cute. So I have several of them, them here. I'm kidding them, working on them. I'm going to get to them. So Okay, my pile is dwindling and I'm gonna get to Stitchy Kindness because first and foremost, this blew me away. Um, I think her name is Lydia and she has an Etsy at Lovely Stitches. No, that might be her Instagram. Lovely Stitches 835. Um, I will find her Etsy store because she doesn't list the name and I'm not sure that that's her, her Etsy store. But I saw this pattern on, uh, somebody on Instagram was stitching this and I loved it. And I searched and searched and searched for it and I could not find it. I couldn't find anybody that carried it. And I was talking on a thread and I asked like, hey, you know, where'd you get this pattern? Is it available anymore? And somebody said, oh, this is a um, Netherlands pattern. I don't think you can get it outside the Netherlands very easily. And this wonderful lady popped in and said, I just got done stitching this. Would you like me to send you my copy? That is amazing. I mean, she lives in the Netherlands. She sent it to me. I, I 
offered to pay her and she said, please, when you're done stitching it, pass it on to somebody else. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. This is, is this not adorable? Let me find the name. It is D Quaker, but I don't know that that's actually the name of this pattern. Let me look. Um, it's also in a different language in the back, so I had to translate it to find out. I thought that it was telling me the stitch count, but I had to make sure. So I'm just gonna put this up, and I'm gonna put a snapshot up here. Let me see if you can focus on that. Is this not amazing? It says quiet, please, cross stitcher. Um, I, I love this. I loved it. It was so pretty and there's so many takes on it. Um, I'm gonna start this. I'm trying to decide right now what floss color I'm using. I'm gonna use a variegated floss. I'm gonna use one color of variegated floss. Um, I think I'm gonna go with DMC um, because their variegations can be wildly in the in the variegation. But I'm gonna look. I might take this to my LNS and find a very variegated floss, a fancy floss that I'm in love with. It's very tempting to do it in silk. It would be expensive, but it was very tempting. So I am so appreciative of this. She also so sent me a needle minder from her Etsy store. And I have been waiting to open this up because I didn't want to, um, ugh, it's all taped. Let me see if I can, it's, it's very well wrapped. I should have opened this up before. So it's a little wood needle minder. How pretty is that? So pretty. I I just love this. Let me see if her name is on here. No, it says thank you. Okay, I am gonna link her her store down below because I know that I she sent me a wonderful little note with this. So nice. That was the sweetest first did you kindness. So thank you so much. I will put the name of the store down below and thank you, thank you, thank you so much. That is so sweet. So I'm gonna do my whips. We are 47 minutes in and I haven't shown you my whips. This is gonna be a long video. Okay, so my current one that I was stitching on last night was Rust in Peace from Twin, Weeks, Twin Peaks Primitives. And this is my progress. So last time I literally had the head of the goat and I filled him in more and started on the truck and a bird. So um, I actually needed some floss. I thought that I had all the colors, but apparently I was missing some colors out of there and I don't know what happened because normally it doesn't go on my cart until it's fully kitted, but somehow it got on there. Okay. I worked a little bit on my Harry Potter one. Let me show you the progress. Let me show you the pattern first or the picture of the pattern, not the pattern. Harry and Hedwig. And I just love this one. Sorry, now I have the hiccups. So I've done some more fill in and coming down and starting on the owl. Not a huge amount of progress, but I really, really like stitching on this one. So I don't want to be in a huge hurry to stitch it. I just want to enjoy stitching it. And I am, I'm totally enjoying when I get a chance to stitch on this one. Um, I have this in my so um, much to love bag and it's Jeeps. So if you don't know, I drive a Jeep. My son has a Jeep. We love our Jeeps. So that bag was gonna be purchased cause it needed to be. Okay, my next one is a pattern that I got off of Etsy and it is from Berber Design SF. SF. Um, and it is, I'm gonna preface this with, if you don't like foul language, this is not the pattern for you. 
So it is hand lettering and it is a quote from Clark Griswold Christmas Vacation. And it says, when Santa squeezes his fat white ass down that chimney tonight, he's going to find the jolliest bunch of assholes this side of the nut house, Clark Griswold. And I love the lettering. I, I love fancy lettering. So this one was bought and I started it. Um, once again, not everybody's cup of tea, but it's mine. I love Christmas vacation. So as you can see, I used variegated thread. I am using DMC 115. So 115 is found at my Hobby Lobby. I am sure it's probably in Joann's as well. Um, I, I had three skeins of it. I actually bought more today when I went to Hobby Lobby. So you can tell I've been working on this. I'm sorry, I'm losing light. So I don't think this is gonna show up good. So can you see DMC kind of widely variegates, but it's really pretty. So that's gonna be all done with that. I debated about using sparkle thread. And I say sparkle thread because I do not pronounce it correctly nine times out of 10. Don't pronounce it correctly. A toile? Okay, now make me pronounce it again and I'll get it wrong. Um, but I thought about doing a toile thread. Um, and at the last minute I saw that red variegated and I was like, oh no, that's gonna be it. So I had that in my stash. I did pick up more today just so that I don't run out. Um, did I work on this? Yes, okay. So I worked, let me make sure. Yes, the Nutcracker Parade I worked on. And if you haven't seen it, um, there is a nut, wait a minute. Okay, I haven't stuck the final clue in here printed out yet. I don't think I have it, no. So there is a border down here and it's all the way done. And I am behind, but that's okay. And I did mine, I'm working on the Mouse King. She is totally done, but she's in my hoops, you can't see. There is some etoile thread in here, a little bit. And then this is, there's a good picture to show the shine. His whole carriage is done with filament, um, some blending thread and the color. So the Mouse King deserves a shiny carriage. So I had to do him shiny, but I didn't want him totally to stand out. So that's why I have the etoile thread throughout, I will also put some um, on clue number two because I skipped clue number two and went to clue number three because it was just that great. Okay, this one, once again, is not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. I totally get it. Um, if it's not your cup of tea, that's okay. So this is the Chopping Mall Stitch Along from Witchy Stitcher. And this is gonna be basically her, um, let me show this outside of the, I don't know why I do that, I forget, I'm sorry. This is gonna be, um, let's see. I don't even, I don't think I have her little description. Let me see what, no. It's pretty much if your horror movie characters were going to work for money, where would they work? And this is the chopping, at the chopping mall, but, Chopping, the shopping is replaced on the C. I don't know if that's picking up on there, but you stitch it as shopping mall and then you go over it with a C, the red C. I don't think you can see it though. It's a great pattern, witchy stitcher. It's her next sow. I signed up for it because hers is fantastic. I have done, you know, well, I'm working on universal monster sow, but let's face it, I need to start all the things. I think it makes my ADD, if I have ADD, I don't think I have ADD, but in stitching I do. So it makes me happy to start all the things. I have a teeny tiny start. Look how top, small that start is. But it's a start. And that's the important thing. I don't think this fabric is showing true on there. It's, it's not great lighting today, so it's not showing great. Um, but I do have it all kitted up. 
Um, I will work on it. I So I'm the unusual one, okay? So when I do a sow, I love sows. I love sows because everybody is working on the same project. I don't love sows because it's on a, it, like released each month or each week or whatever it is. And I don't feel the need to like stitch it within that time. I never do that. I'm And I'm not going to do that. That's not who I am. Just so you know, I throw those rules out the window. I stitch it when I want to stitch it because I don't enjoy stitching on a schedule. I could never be a paid stitcher. One, because my backs are a mess. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. I am so not worried about it. So I could not be a sample stitcher. Um, but I also, this is fun for me. I don't want it to be a job. I want to stitch on what I want to stitch on when I want to stitch on it. So when I get done today, I'm going to figure out one of my whips. I'm going to open it up and start stitching on it. It doesn't matter to me which one it is. I'm just going to stitch on something. Um, so some of these projects will actually go on the shelf because I won't have them done in time for Christmas. That's okay. I will pull them out for next year. And like if you take a break from a project for a month or two, it's kind of fun to go back to it and visit an old friend and start to stitch on it. And that's kind of the way I look at it. So I don't, aside from the things that I needed to get done, I wanted to get my boys ornaments done this year. I wanted to get, I had to get the girls ornaments done. Um, I wanted to do those things. So I stitched those on a time limit. Um, the other stuff, I have no time on there. Like I can stitch them whenever I want to. It just doesn't bother me. So I did work on Kringle and Woodlard. Wood, I cannot say this name. Wool, Woodlard. I don't know. I can't say it. What's wrong with me? From Plum Street Sampler. And I, for some reason, I have a hard time with that. I can say it in my mind. My mouth cannot say it. So I don't have tons of progress done, but I do have a little bit of his face. His hat was complete and I'm starting to work down on his um, beard now. I changed the color of his face. They had the color of his face really, really dark. It's supposed to be 407 and it just, it, it didn't look right on my fabric. It looked weird. So I changed and lightened his face, and I think you can still see the variegation from his hat to his hair to his face. I think it's fine. Um, that's the only thing that I know. I changed this. I changed the red. I am using the red and the green. Okay, so I lied. I changed everything. Um, I am using cherry wine for the red because it was a bright red. I literally looked through my stash and found a red that I liked and that was it. And then I am using, what green is this? Um, da, 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 da. Hold on. I am using moss from uh, Weeks for the green. So as long as the colors looked good together, I was fine with that. Um, and it was, I just wanted a brighter red, that's all. I just wanted it to be very Christmassy and red. And um, I think it calls for cherry cobbler and the cherry cobbler wasn't quite, um, it wasn't quite as red as I needed it. Liam, come here. Yeah, he's starting to look out the window and um, he's gonna start barking. So, you know, there's leaves and stuff happening out there. No, 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 no barking. Okay, so I did work on Pair of Pilgrims. And I have threads all over the place, but there's my, oops, sorry. There's my progress on him. He may go on the shelf because Thanksgiving is over. Uh-uh, come here, come here. Hold on, let me let him out. They all want to go outside. Like I said, there's leaves and stuff out there. So weird. They're very strange dogs. Okay. And then the last one that I worked on. Yes, I think this is the last one. Is Bethlehem. And I didn't get tons of work done. But 
I was able to move my hoop and I'm on to the next part. So it's a lot more stitching than I thought it was. Isn't that always the way? Am I the only one that does that? Like stitches and stitches and stitches and then you realize like, oh, this is bigger than I thought it was. That's me. That's what I do. Okay, so that is all that I have as far as stitching. Okay, I did want to do a shout out. Um, I've done a couple of shout outs in here for different things, but I wanted to shout out a new to me floss tuber of Liz Matthews. She does a really good punch needle tutorial and I um, subscribed to punch, wait a minute, is it punch needle and primitive, primitive and punch needle? I'm not sure. Primitive stitching and punch needle, something along that lines. And there are some beautiful punch needle patterns. So I've never done punch needle, so I actually want to do one. I have a pattern set on in my um, craft room that I want to kit up and I really want to try it. So, um, it, I, all the ones that I've gotten are out of that magazine. They're so pretty. So like the magazine, I have the digital copy of it and the magazine does like one punch needle, one cross stitch, one punch needle, one cross stitch. And that's kind of how it goes through the whole um, magazine. And there's some beautiful patterns in there. So, um, I've gotten some patterns from Twin, Le Twin Peaks Primitive, Barbara, Ann Desi Barbara Anna Designs, great patterns. So, um, that is all that I have. I do have last week's giveaway, but I'm going to be honest with you. I forgot last week's giveaway was Christmas rules from Lizzie Kate. And I forgot to do the random generator to find out who won. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the comments. So check the comment box. Like I said, if it's not in the comics comments yet, check back. It will be there. I will have giveaway winner and I will have your name. Contact me either um, by my email is made by Michelle McGraw at gmail.com. You can um, contact me on Instagram if that's easier. And I'm made by Michelle McGraw. Um, send a pigeon carrier. I don't know. Whatever. Contact me with your address and your name. And if your name is different from your um, YouTube name that you commented on, put both of them so that I know that it's you. And um, don't put it back to the comment there. Send me a message because um, I do want to send it to you. I am not gonna do a giveaway this week only because we're coming into the Christmas season. And I am not 100% sure when I will do another video. So I, my goal always is every two weeks. I don't feel like I have enough to show you every week. Although maybe if I did it every week, my videos wouldn't be over an hour. I'm sorry if anybody doesn't like hour long videos. Hopefully you've been stitching away and you feel like it's stitching with a friend. I hope so because that, that would be awesome. I would. I would love that. So if you do that, tell me, I stitched with you today and that would just make my day. So um, I don't want to promise to do a giveaway and then it'd be three weeks instead of two weeks and people anticipating it being in two weeks. So I will start my giveaways back in January. Okay, so that way we won't have any problem. I am traveling some in January, but I will do the giveaway um, I'll be able to do it better at that point. I just, I don't want to show a giveaway and then it be three weeks before I can come back to you and people forget about the giveaway or think that I haven't come back and I don't want to do that. So I will put the giveaway winner down in the comments. Um, sorry, I didn't look at that and I can't look at it because I'm using my phone to video. And my iPad is right there by my stitching chair. So I can't look at that either. So. Um, I will put it down in there, um, but um, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, I hope that everybody who celebrates Christmas has a great Christmas. I hope to have another video before Christmas. I feel like that's totally doable. But with that said, we have three boys going in three different directions and everybody is in and out. And so I try to do it when it's quietest around my house. Some days that's quieter than others. So um, 
I'll just say, hopefully I'll be back in two weeks. Um, hopefully I'll have lots of stitching and um, be able to share with you again. So I hope you guys have a great holiday season. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a great time too. Um, and we will, like I said, we will do a giveaway in January. I'll do that again. So thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for liking. If you haven't subscribed, click their subscribe button, like the video, that always helps. Um, and I love, love, love Stitchy Friends. It's been so much fun to get to know people and meet people from Floss Tube. Um, so a little mini rant. I was on uh, a Facebook group and I don't remember what group, I'm in lots of Facebook groups for stitching. And somebody um, wanted floss tube recommendations. So everybody was listing floss tubes and they were listing their floss tubes. And I put on there, you know, I love new stitching friends. Here's my floss tube. And I put a link to my last video and somebody um, commented on it and was like, Ugh, what is this about? Five minutes in, I couldn't stand it anymore and stopped it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't understand your question. What do you mean? What is it about? It's floss, like, I didn't know how to respond because I don't want to be like, oh, okay, that's kind of rude because maybe I'm reading tone into it. Maybe she was just confused as to what floss tube is. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I was like, oh, that's, you basically told me that you couldn't stand five minutes of my video and you turned it off. I was like, so I'm not getting a like from her. Okay. <laughs> so and then um, people were listing other, and some people said like, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, I think she came back and also said something like, sorry, floss tubers, I just find it boring. Um, I'd rather work it out for myself. And like, I get that, like, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but if it's not your cup of tea, scroll by floss tube things. You know, if that's not, if you don't like floss tube, that's fine. Obviously everybody who's here and made it to the end of my really long rambling video likes floss tube. But I get it. It's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, but it was just, maybe, and you can't read tone into typed words. And and I was reading tone into it. And I was like, step away from the keyboard, step away from the keyboard. Um, and so I was like, oh my God. Somebody else said, like, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And, and they came, they were going back and forth. And, and I basically just said, you know, it is, a community. It is to bond with other people with like interests. And I have met, and I say met, the sweetest, the nicest people, the most encouraging people through FlossTube, through Instagram, through Facebook groups. And even if what we're stitching is not your cup of tea, it's still a liked interest. And so I like to watch FlossTubers that are stitching, maybe not exactly what I'm stitching because who's stitching exactly what I'm stitching, but similar interests. And then like, I'm inspired by other floss tubers, like a memorabilia. I've never done a memorabilia. I have been stitching since I'm seven years old. I've never done a memorabilia. I don't know why. Um, I can bead, I can do all that stuff. That doesn't bother me. I can actually, if I don't want to bead, you can change it to Krenlich. You can change it to a toile floss. You can change it to, you know, any of the blending filaments if you want to, if you don't want to be, they're beautiful with or without it. Um, you could do whatever you want to do. I just have never attempted one and I'm like, I want to attempt one. So I was inspired by other floss tubers, other stitchers. Um, that's what floss tube is to me, is, is the community. And so I just, it was funny. I mean, I, I laughed because I actually read it in the tone of my mother. <laughs> because my mother like says stuff and she doesn't think how it comes through. And you're like, oh, that's not good. Um, so I, I didn't want to respond back because maybe that lady didn't intend for it to be read in that tone. And I'm sure like I was like totally reading it in a bad tone. Maybe she didn't mean that way. Maybe she's just like, hey, floss tube isn't my thing. I get that, you know, like totally understand that. No problem. <laughs> It was just so funny and I'm kind of like, well, why do you keep commenting on a thread about floss tube if you don't like floss tube? Scroll, scroll on by, just keep scrolling. So anyhow, I just thought that was funny. Apparently that lady is not liking my videos. So 
If you like my videos, like and subscribe. And thank you for joining me. I'm sorry the video is so long. I hope that you got some stitching done during it and you got to stitch with a friend. And if you did, leave me a comment because I read every single comment and I enjoy interacting with everybody. So thank you so much. And I will talk to you again soon.